The massacre near Moscow. A short time ago, Russian state media reported that the suspected attackers are all foreign citizens. ISIS claims responsibility for the rampage on a concert venue yesterday. The death toll rising once again today to at least 133 people. And in his first video message since the attack, President Vladimir Putin called it a barbaric terrorist act. CNN senior international correspondent Fred Pleiken is monitoring developments from Berlin. Uh, Fred, good morning to you. Have authorities given any more details about the suspects in this attack? Well, they have. The Russian authorities certainly have. And it seems to diverge a little bit from what we've been hearing uh, from the U.S. and also from ISIS itself. Of course, ISIS claimed responsibility uh, for the attack that happened late last night. They offered uh, an additional social media post uh, uh, earlier today. And then you had the U.S. that came out and said that they have absolutely no reason to doubt ISIS's claim of responsibility. Of course, the U.S. coming out very early. Now, the Russians have a bit of a different uh, take uh, on all of that. They say that they have, at this point in time, apprehended 11 individuals in total. That includes the four shooters who they say went into that concert venue uh, yesterday evening outside of Moscow in the town of Krasnogorsk and started shooting up almost everybody that came across their path. The Russians saying uh, some of those people shot at point blank. We're seeing some of the aftermath uh, on our screen right now. The Russians are saying, as you pointed out, that none of those individuals are uh, Russian citizens. They do say, and this comes from Vladimir Putin, who went on Russian state TV earlier today, uh, that apparently these individuals tried to make a getaway to Ukraine. Let's listen in. All four direct perpetrators of the terrorist attack, all those who shot and killed people, were found and detained. They tried to hide and move towards Ukraine, where, according to preliminary data, a window was prepared for them on the Ukrainian side to cross the state border. A total of 11 people were detained. So an interesting thing there that Vladimir Putin is saying, allegedly a window was opened for them on the other side, as he put it, obviously seeming to mean some sort of opening in the border, which would be remarkable because, of course, that border currently is the front line between Ukraine and the Russians. There's a lot of fighting that's going on uh, in that area. So the Russians apparently trying to somehow were apparently implicating or at least linking all of this uh, to Ukraine. The Ukrainians at this point in time having none of it, saying they have absolutely nothing to do with all this. Mm -hmm. All right, Fred Plaikin, uh, thank you so much. And I should say good evening to you. It's five o'clock there. Thanks so much. All right, let's uh, bring in CNN national security analyst Steve Hall and CNN chief law enforcement and intelligence analyst Analyst John Miller, great to see you both gentlemen. So, Steve, you first. ISIS, you know, quick to claim responsibility for this attack, but we heard Putin suggest that the suspects were trying to flee into Ukraine. He obviously wants to make some sort of correlation with Ukraine, perhaps, you know, added justification for Russia's invasion of that country. Yeah, Fred, it's worth remembering that whatever comes out of the Kremlin is uh, serves no other purpose than to support Vladimir Putin and the Kremlin's policies. Mm -hmm. So whether it's numbers of casualties, whether it's who committed this terrorist act, whether it's whether they were going to Ukraine or not, which frankly makes zero sense whatsoever from, mm -hmm. from pretty much any perspective, unless you're trying to protect Vladimir Putin from embarrassment for not listening to intelligence that was provided by the United States and probably others, there's really nothing to believe there. So, yeah, it doesn't, it, it seems to make sense to me that it would be a terrorist element. The United States government doesn't see any inconsistencies with it being ISIS. Uh, so, you know, my, my inclination is to believe any other source before you believe the Kremlin. And, John, in fact, the U.S. and other Western governments had warned Russia earlier this month about the possibility of an ISIS attack. Uh, Putin labeled the warning outright blackmail during a speech earlier this week. So help folks understand, even though Russia is an adversary of the U.S., America adheres uh, by this so-called duty to warn. So the duty to warn doctrine um, applies particularly in terrorism, where there is information that one intelligence service may come into that means people may be killed in another place. And even if that place is not a U.S. ally, even if it's a hostile foreign power, the duty to warn is to protect innocent people no matter what the politics. And so U.S. intelligence passed the information they had about terrorist chatter, about an upcoming attack in Russia. Um, and then on March 7th, for Americans in the region, actually posted that on the embassy website. And yes, Fred, as you said, 
Vladimir Putin came out and said this was an attempt to destabilize, you know, Russians' feelings of safety. Yesterday was the fog of war. Today what we have is the fog of propaganda. So let's break mm -hmm. it down. Mm -hmm. For Vladimir Putin, it's going to be very important to try and leverage this not into a massive intelligence failure, massive security failure, um, confused response, but rather to make this Russia's October 7th. Innocent people slaughtered, and who better to push that blame to, um, even tacitly, mm -hmm. than to the Ukraine. Mm. So we're seeing that unfold now um, in a mix of propaganda, but also information coming from official channels and Putin himself. From the U.S. standpoint, um, ISIS claimed responsibility through, for this through its official channels, put out more material today, and has a history of animosity towards Russia, going back to the Russian bombing of its camps and fighters in Syria on behalf of Bashir Assad, um, its actions in the Caucasus against the Chechnyans and other Muslims in the region. So it fits, but we're going to see a tug of war mm -hmm. in the propaganda space right now. Mm, interesting. And, and Steve, it's been barely a week since Putin uh, was elected to his fifth term as president. Uh, he has long branded himself as a strong man leader, able to keep peace and order. So how does this attack uh, affect that perception to his people and his defiance against believing that issued threat? Yeah, Fred, I think this is what Vladimir Putin is most concerned about in this attack. He's certainly not really concerned about, you know, the loss of the loss of Russian life. Uh, you know, if that were the case, he, he wouldn't be sending tens and thousands, hundreds of thousands of young Russian men to die for no good reason on, on Ukrainian front lines. So that's not his main concern. His main concern is, is that he's got to deal with the Russian people. And the deal goes something like this. Russian society is prepared to say, look, we don't need all of the all of these freedoms that they have in the West. You know, these things that, that you guys call elections, they're not really elections in Russia, but that's fine. We're not going to speak out too strongly against that. And in return for a, a limiting of those civil liberties that we're used to in the West, Putin is supposed to provide security. So when he fails to do that, as he clearly did in this case, and it's made worse by the fact that he knew about it beforehand mm -hmm. from intelligence, that could cause the Russian people to say, hold on a second. How come we're being repressed when we try to protest? How come people like Navalny are dying and, and all these resources are going to control these so-called so opposition forces and we can't even go to a concert without getting slaughtered? That gets into that, it starts to erode that agreement between Putin and Russian society. And that's what I think he's got to be very worried about right now. Mm, all very powerful. All right. Steve Hall, John Miller, good to see you both. Thanks so much.